I'll call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as we uh, have our invocation. Dr. Mike, uh, Pastor Mike McDonald. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for our town. We thank you for our beautiful valley and the majestic mountains that contain us. We thank you for our sense of community and the town government that serves us. We thank you for the employees, the commissions, and council members. We thank you for all their hard work. We ask you to be with the council tonight. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will remind us that each and every one of your children is created in your image and that you are no respecter of persons. May all decisions be made for the good of the community and not for the benefit of the few. And on this day, O oh Lord, we ask for healing for our nation and especially the people of Orlando. We pray for healing from hateful words and actions that strive to create division and conflict between us. Hatred that causes conflict because of nationality, religion, or sexual orientation. O oh Lord, give us deaf ears to hatred and open hearts to reconciliation. Give us deaf ears to violence and open hearts to peace. Give us deaf ears to bigotry and open hearts to justice. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor McDonald. <coughs> All right. Before I give my announcements, I'd like to let Dr. Maurer from Montreat come up and give a presentation, please, on Montreat College. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Good evening. It's good to uh, be with you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to share a little bit about what's happening at Montreat College. Um, the reason I want to come and, and share with you is, is uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's been about a year since I met with most of you individually or in small groups as we were seeking permission for the, the new athletic complex uh, on our Black Mountain campus. And uh, I'll, in a few minutes, show you some of the photos of that. But I, I thought it was um, worthwhile to come and give you an update on what's been happening at the college. The college was in the news a lot a couple of years ago. Uh, and it was uh, a little over two years ago, the college really faced two possible outcomes. One was to close, and the other was to have something dramatic happen uh, in our world as a faith-based institution to have God show up in a big way. And uh, the latter happened, and I think most of you know that uh, we had an anonymous donor uh, who came forth and made a pledge of $6 million to the college. Uh, that person had never stepped foot on campus had no connection to the college in any way at all, uh, doesn't live in the state of North Carolina, and um, over the course of um, some emails over about a six week period, made a pledge of $6 million to the college. Their pledge has grown since then to about nine million, a little under nine million, and between March 1 of 2014 and June 30 of 2016, they will have given $9 million to Montreal College. That gift has been absolutely catalytic to the institution, and we have seen um, uh, just a dramatic series of events take place since then. Um, I, was, I came on, the, the board realized that, that um, again, as a faith-based institution, that, that God was maybe not finished with Montreal College, and so they hired a search firm. Uh, I came on in July of 2014. Uh, one of my top priorities coming in the door was to, was to help clarify the identity of the institution, which had gotten ambiguous over time. And so we developed a brand promise that we began to utilize for um, our admissions material. We retrained all of our admissions counselors, our coaches, and the brand promise goes like this, that Monterey College is an independent, Christ-centered, liberal arts institution that educates students through intellectual inquiry, spiritual formation, and preparation for a calling and career. That brand promise we took to the marketplace. We started what we call the Meet Montreat Roadshow. Uh, we go into a different city about once a month during the academic year. 
We've conducted 17 roadshow events. We have two more this summer, five more scheduled in the fall. And we're in every city within 250 miles of, uh, of Black Mountain Montreat. And, and we feel like the, the market has begun to respond to the clarity of identity and the fact that we're going to the market, identifying who we are, uh, and asking them to, to, um, to come on board. We had a record enrollment, uh, highest freshman class enrollment in 30 years in the fall of 2015. And uh, I also was in a position of having to hire most of my executive team. So in my first year, I hired five cabinet officers, five presidential level cabinet officers, um, and they came from all over the country. But I hired in a pretty unusual way. I used um, the, the, the ad used by um, Ernest Shackleton of a century ago when he was trying to cross the land portion of the Antarctic with a, um, a group of men that um, he had tried it twice before, he had failed, and at the age of 40 he said, I've, I think I've got one more shot, and he put an ad in the London Times, and the ad read this way, men wanted for hazardous journey, bitter cold, small wages, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. And that was how I recruited my executive team. I, I showed them that <coughs> ad and I asked them the question, uh, does this excite you? Does this ad excite you? And the only acceptable answer was something along the lines of, oh yes, very much. And so they came. They came from Kansas and Minnesota and Arkansas, uh, from Michigan and from South Carolina, and they came in and they began the process of rebuilding an institution. And so for um, two years we've been on a journey of, of rebuilding a, a very broken institution. Um, we still have a long way to go, we still have a lot of work to do, but a great deal of work has happened. And, and it, that catalytic gift has had many, many, um, ha has had a tremendous domino impact on the institution. Hiring that team was part of the catalytic impact. Um, we had record gift income a year ago of 9.1 million to the institution. Two years prior, gift income totaled 1.6 million. The year that's just finishing now, we're anticipating about a $7 million gift income year, also very, very strong for an institution of Montreal College's size. Um, we've had academic growth, and we've focused on the strength of academics at the college. We know that over time, um, it will be not just that we're a Christian institution, but that we're a strong academic institution, and the combination of those two really have to fit together. So um, last month, we graduated our first a class of, the, of, a, of a new honors program that started four years ago. Uh, one of those graduates uh, was accepted to Yale University and chose Montreal College instead. She spent four years with us and had a tremendous experience at Montreal College. We're getting some very, very fine students into the honors program. Uh, our vision for the honors program is it would become an honors college over time. Uh, we have about 35 students or so in the honors program today. We like that to be at 100 or more. Um, our natural sciences program is historically strong. We've had a essentially 100% admission rate in a medical school for our biology majors that want to go on to medical school. That's over a long period of time. And the most cutting edge program that we have that perhaps you've heard about is a four year undergraduate degree in cybersecurity. There are very few schools in the United States that have a four year degree in cybersecurity. We have very ambitious plans for that program. We started it two years ago, so we've just finished our second year in the program. We had eight students the first year. We had 22 students come in a year ago. We're expecting another 20 or 30 new freshmen into the program this fall. We expect that number to go up. We're laying plans for starting a master's program in cybersecurity. We're laying plans for how to roll our program out to our, our Charlotte campus. Uh, we're in discussion with our congressional delegation because cybersecurity is a, is a national security crisis problem that will get a lot worse over the course of the next few years and it will get better. Um, we're in discussion with uh, industry, with government, uh, federal, state, and local to talk about how do we partner in a P3 partnership, a public-private partnership to really uh, develop um, not only Montreal College, but, but Western North Carolina as something of a nationally recognized expert in the cybersecurity space. 
We've had nothing but tremendous energy from, from government and, and private industry partners uh, as, we've, as we've discussed the concept. We've been able to do physical upgrades on campus. We've done six physical upgrades in the last two years. We started with our largest residence hall, Anderson Hall, a complete $2 million <laughs> renovation of, of that, our largest, um, fe largest residence hall. It's a female residence hall. We completely redid uh, a fitness center, uh, kind of took it down to the studs and started over. It's a beautiful uh, state-of-the-art facility. Uh, we were able to do a $300,000 renovation of our, of our dining facility. It had not been upgraded in many, many years. Uh, the students that saw the before and after, it was a pretty dramatic shift for them. Uh, we added a black box theater for a new theater major. Uh, that's um, in, in one of our buildings on campus. It's a state-of-the-art black, black box teaching facility. And, and as you know, we, we, um, we added the athletic <coughs> complex. So. Uh, which button am I pressing here? One of the, the points to the right. So that's the groundbreaking of the athletic complex. And there's some of the site work being done with those mountains in the background. Uh, and there's the completed, uh, which was completed in time for fall of 16, fall of 15 competition for uh, our men's and women's soccer programs. Uh, we also have men's and women's lacrosse on the, on, the, uh, on the field, and we've just recently completed the track, uh, the eight-lane championship track around the, uh, around the field. Uh, we were able to host uh, this, uh, this spring for the first time. There's a, there's a nice bird's eye view of the track and field. We were able to host for the first time uh, a conference championship. The women's lacrosse championship came, came to town. Uh, we are hoping to host the uh, men's and women's track conference track and field championships a year from now. Um, part of what we were not able to do with the, the current funding that we had for this project, we, we did not have enough money to put in lights or to put in um, stands. And so we have a proposal in front of the TDA, uh, a one-for-one -one matching proposal that, we, that would fund lights and stands that would really give us the capacity to bring in heads on beds. And so we're, we're really hoping this facility will be an economic uh, boost to the town. And if, if we can get the, the TDA um, grant, uh, we're confident that we can match that grant and get the lights and the stands in time for a track and field championship. That would bring in hundreds and hundreds of people over the course of, of, um, of the championship meet. So um, we have, um, I'll just leave that up. Um, we have uh, six projects that are, have been completed. We have projects seven, eight, and nine underway this summer, um, and 10 and beyond kind of in the plans, uh, but a little too early to talk about. Um, we're just moving into a master planning phase for the college. We've had someone come in and underwrite uh, an extensive and complete and comprehensive master planning process. And I want to share in particular with, with this council the uh, two decisions that, that our Board of Trustees made at the January Board of Trustees meeting this year uh, in preparation for the master planning process. One is that uh, we will seek to have that we will we will pursue master planning with the idea that we will be a two campus institution. So the Montreal campus is fine, but it's small and confining, and we can't grow there to the size that we need to be as an institution to be a strong, healthy um, liberal arts college. Uh, we have only 420 beds in Montreal. Uh, we aspire to be a college of 2,000 traditional undergrads. And so we either were going to move the entire campus to Black Mountain to the property or have a two campus model. And the board voted unanimously for us to have a two campus model. So we'll continue renovating the, the, the old campus, the main campus in Montreat, as well as beginning to or continue to build out the, the Black Mountain campus. And then the second decision was um, to give the master planners a, a, a target enrollment uh, in, in our world of, of higher education and in small institutions, your economies of scale don't really begin until you're at 1,500 or 2,000 students. And so we've got a ways to go to get there. It'll take some years to get to that, to that level. But we are giving the master planners 
a, a 2,000 traditional student target with about an 80% residential rate. So that'd be about 1,600 residential students, 400 on the Montre campus, another 12 to 1,500 on the, on the Black Mountain campus. So that's all I wanted to do today is um, give you an update. It's been a remarkable, fast-moving, hard-working two years. We've made a lot of progress. Um, the turnaround is, 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 is fully underway. We have a very, very long way to go. We're mindful of that, but we're, we're encouraged. And uh, we do see our future as principally migrating to Black Mountain. And so we're um, wanting to just keep you updated and, and, and uh, continue to build the relationships necessary for a strong partnership. I'll stop. Thank you, sir. Does anyone on the board wish to make any comments or have any questions? Thank you, Paul. Appreciate you Thanks for coming. Yeah, well, thank you very much. And it is a good thing to have a college in a town, and it's a good thing to have such a good sense of community that we have with us with the school. So, thank you. We look forward to seeing seeing you grow. Thank you. Few little announcements here. Uh, wish to thank Jamie and his crew for what they have done on the um, US seventy. When you go down US 70, just want to know on your left hand side where the Big Ingalls Warehouse is. You know, you have all those beautiful uh, trees on the, on the uh, left. And they've been trimmed and they've been mowed around some. But those red buds, once they stop blooming, you begin to see, if you're coming back to Black Mountain from Swannanoa, you begin to see this big ditch on the right that has been full of a lot of debris, a lot of overgrowth. and. Uh, Jamie and his men went down in there and at least cut all the stuff down and have removed a lot of the debris. There's still some there, but still, it is amazing how much better that looks. So, Jamie, please pass that on to the men about what a good job that they've, they've done on that. That really improves the looks of the town. Um, on the 24th of May, we, we had a, a celebration uh, where there was a proclamation honoring Renee Bram. Um, she is the lady that retired, so I don't know about a Christian ministry, and uh, what a wonderful organization. And uh, that lady is responsible for taking that from just a very small little group of people into what it is today, which is the facility behind us here. Uh, Don, Don Collins spoke very highly of her, and he spoke, and Chief Padgett went ahead and spoke also, so to an overflow crowd, and uh, it was quite a nice evening. We're going to miss her. She certainly has done a good job, but she's still going to be in the community. Uh, the third is what uh, Chief had put up on the, the website, and that is, uh, this is the 2016 safest cities in North Carolina, safe-wise. And as it turns out, Black Mountain is number 12 in the state. So I think that's that is a, uh, quite an accomplishment. Uh, our police department needs to have a pat on the back for that. Thank you very much for what you all have done. Under citizen comment, we just had, we just had a citizen comment from, from Paul. So now we're just going to go to consent agenda. Yes, sir. So you have um, the adoption of minutes from your May 5th and your May 9th agenda workshop and regular session. You've got a call for a public hearing to close the unopened platted right of way off of Pearl Street. That'll be held on July the 11th at our regular board meeting there. You've got a call for a public hearing to rezone a parcel on Old Lakey Gap Road from uh, TR4 to TND. This is associated with uh, um, Cheshire's Jacobs Cottages. I think they will come back at a later date with uh, um, an amendment to the master plan. Uh, for the for the development there, but th this is the public hearing in July. You've got a call for a public hearing for text amendments to tattoo parlor studios um, for for July. This expands the use to uh, to the T and D um, zoning jurisdiction, and you've got a and then you, and then you've got a handful of budget amendments because it's the end of the fiscal year, and that's what we do at the end of the year. You've got a budget amendment for golf operations labor moving um, $40,000 from contracted services um, or moving or, or moving it uh, uh, from part-time wages to contracted services. We use First Inc. out at the golf course, and so we, we, uh, we, we make that change at the end of the year for the um, 
for the uh, for the part time labor costs that are associated with that. You've got a budget amendment um, from public buildings to the capital reserve fund. This moves um, seventy five thousand dollars in contingency money that you budget for. We didn't use that contingency money, so this will go into the uh, capital reserve fund for the future purchase of uh, of a fire truck that we've been in discussions about that. Um, with with that transfer, you will then have set aside over the last four years, I think four years, $425,000 towards the purchase of a fire truck, which we will um, be able to do uh, in the 2017-18 um, fiscal year, uh, and then we will be able to purchase that fire truck without, uh, without assuming any debt for it. <coughs> You've got a budget amendment um, for sidewalks at Town Square. You actually... You approved the sidewalk last year, and there was some, and there was a budget amendment associated with it. Then, uh, this is some additional costs. It had some landscaping, some other work that went with that um, for the for the sidewalk and the landscaping and the iron work and the iron handrail that goes down um, uh, from the bathrooms to the parking lot. You've got a budget amendment to re reimburse uh, the town for. Um, Expenses. We, what we do with this one, you know, generally, if there's if there's if there's larger projects, um, the sidewalk, the shelter, I can't, or the bathrooms when they were when they were done, you all approve that on the front end. We do the budget amendment then. There are there are during the year expenses that come up, maintenance expenses, bricks, um, other maintenance issues, and we just kind of consolidate that at the end of the year. You can see for the whole year, it's three thousand four hundred and seventy eight dollars uh, for those uh, for those expenses. I would point out that, that uh, the, the um, Recreation Foundation has reimbursed the town for all of our expenses, though these two, uh, plus any expenses so far associated with the, uh, with the shelter, there was a budget amendment earlier for the, in previous months for that. And so, they've been, and so we, we've been, uh, been reimbursed from the uh, Recreation Foundation for all expenses um, assumed by the town over this fiscal year. <coughs> You've got a excuse me, a budget amendment to close out the Lake Tomahawk dredging project. Um, that is uh, what the, at least this, this portion of it is, um, is completed. And so we've, uh, we've redirected some money from uh, fuel accounts and other, and other departments to, uh, to finish, to close out that project. And you've got a budget amendment, and we discussed this um, at the agenda session for the police separation allowance. Really, this is, this is um, more about how we report our separation allowances, uh, just for the for the public's information, and Dean will, will help me when I when I mess this up. But the separation allowance is a, is a supplement for retired police officers. They get it till they're 62 years old. When they retire, we set up a, we set up a fund to uh, to to pay for that. That has been set up. This, this budget amendment does not change what we what what our obligations are, or also what we have set aside for it. All it does is change the way we're going to report that. The, uh, GASB has uh, uh, general accounting standards for budgeting. Is that, is that what it stands for? How close is that? That's pretty close, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, <laughs> those re those requirements for uh, for how we how we report uh, the separation allowance shifted, and so that's what this budget amendment does. The only way you'll ever note it doesn't change the way any cash on hand. The way you may see it is in the financial statements. For it, it, it would it would now it would no longer be available fund balance. It would show as uh, as committed fund balance, and that would be, the, and so it, it would change in that regard. It would it would uh, it would show our fund balance um, differently. That is the only way you'll notice that um, uh, that this budget amendment and this new reporting method is taking place. And then finally, you've got a resolution in support of the Fonta Flora State Trail. This is a kind of an exciting project. It's a, it's, a, it's been it was designated as a state trail. Um, from the governor last year, this is a trail that runs from Lake James and Burke County to Asheville, the, a proposed trail that runs around Lake James and Burke County to Asheville. Um, it, the, the portion that impacts us is the portion from uh, Old Fort, the, it's, a, it's the depot to depot portion, from the depot in Old Fort to the depot in Black Mountain. And what makes it exciting for us is that it would, it would utilize the portion of our greenway that we're trying to develop, the, the Riverwalk Phase Two portion is what Fontaflora needs to, to continue through Black Mountain to Asheville, and then of course on the other, um, going east uh, um, down the mountain. So we would like a, re a resolution in support of that. It doesn't obligate us for funding. Um, I would say that when we also when we applied for uh, for um, 
TDA funding, just like Montreal College did. Uh, this was part. This was part of our argument for why not our argument. Part of our case for uh, for for why we would should qualify for funding is because this is a regional trail. This is a draw to the area um, for hikers and biking and races and and other other opportunities for people to come to the area. And 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 part of and part of our uh, um, case for for why this the expansion of our greenway is important is because it plays into a regional uh, trail. And so I would ask that we support the resolution. Like I said, it doesn't require any funding. It's mostly to uh, to to lend our support and put our backing behind the development of uh, of the Font de Flora State Trail, and that's your that is your consent agenda. All right. Anybody wish to pull anything? If not, do I hear a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Any discussion of any of the items? Any questions? If not, all in favor. Aye. Opposed? Pass unanimously. All right. Now we're going to go to citizen comment for the new business coming up, which would be the pedestrian plan, and also for vacancies on the different boards. Does anybody wish to? Uh, no one signed up for citizen comment, but I just wanted just to see if there's anybody that had some second thoughts. If not, Ryan Stone, Alderman Stone, will go ahead and uh, give us a rundown on the pedestrian plan. Thank you. All right, well, thank you all for giving me the opportunity tonight to talk about the update to the pedestrian plan. I know it's been a long time coming. We've talked about it for a while. And we're finally here, and I just want to give a brief thanks uh, at the beginning to Matt and to Josh for helping me with this project, allowing me to, to pester them with a number of questions, and hopefully we've, we've got something that everyone in this community will be proud of. So just to start out, when the plan was adopted in 2008, it was undertaken with the aid of a grant from the NCDOT. It involved a group of private consultants, Greenways Incorporated, public input, a steering committee uh, that myself and the mayor were on, along with Julie White and a number of other people. Uh, they gathered information through a series of surveys and public meetings, mostly at park rhythms and whatnot. And this was a comprehensive pedestrian plan. It included both sidewalks and intersection improvements, along with greenway infrastructure and also bicycle infrastructure. And the key reason was in 2008 that the town was growing outward so fast. And there was a, vi a general concern within the community that we lacked connectivity. And this was our attempt to, to address this. And what they came up with was a tiered prioritization of projects, uh, 20 top tier projects that would connect various segments of the community. Now, why the emphasis on this update now is that Generally, it's, it's good to review these plans because at least every five to ten years because circumstances change, funding opportunities change, and sometimes the town's goals change as well. And this was an opportunity for us to get on the same page again and start talking about this. In addition, we've also undertaken standalone plans as, as far as our bicycle plan that will be considered later this year. Uh, we've made incredible progress on our greenway system, including getting TIP funding for the Riverwalk Phase 2. And we've stated it in our comprehensive plan update as one of our highest priorities. The statement you see there, that is vision statement two of the town's uh, vision statements. And actually, six of the 17 incorporate some reference to making this a pedestrian-friendly or more walkable community. And lastly, the, the key goal was to improve quality of life. This is the proposed pedestrian network. Sorry, I couldn't get a better image for you there, but this would just show the interconnectivity of the entire community. The process of this update was uh, to work to clarify the quality of life definitions. You saw that in chapter one of the update that you've gotten there. We wanted to develop a survey and get input from people and to visually inspect projects and see where we are and what we've accomplished and where we're going. These are the elements that define quality of life in the 2008 plan. As you can see, it's very thorough. 
um, including both health, economic, and environmental benefits. One of the things that I wanted to do was kind of streamline that, make it a little easier for people to understand. You'll see these images again. But we wanted to focus quality of life on both personal and physical projects, and also the economic impact that they would create. And you'll see these images again in the bike plan because I borrowed them from our consultant, Don Kostelik. The methods of our survey were to review the original survey that was conducted in 2008. I then went out and researched other surveys from across the, across the country of various sized communities to come up with a series of, uh, I believe it was originally probably 15 to 20 questions, came to talk to Matt and he said, no one will answer that, get it down to 10. <laughs> and so that's what we did. Um, but it, we wanted to focus on existing conditions, we wanted to know why are people walking, what entices them to walk, what, what hinders them from getting from places, and generally what is the, the overall feel for walking in Black Mountain. And we've made that survey available on the town's website for a period of about two months. These are the, the survey questions that we came up with. They're in Appendix A of, what you, of your proposed plan. So you can see all the charts and responses to that. What we found was that when this project was originally undertaken in 2008 is we had 75 responses. When we undertook it last year, we got 311. So we see that people are much more engaged in the issue. But what we found out is that overall people are very satisfied with what we've, we've done so far. They see the efforts of what this, uh, this board and this staff have put forward. Uh, the majority, of course, rate the system as fair to excellent. Safety and connectivity are high important issues. Um, we found that most often uh, walking is used as a recreational purpose. 67% of, of uh, respondents said that. And that's in line with most re studies, uh, including one that came out from the CDC last year that showed that Americans are walking 12% more than they did in 2005. The biggest complaint, of course, was that sidewalks abruptly end, and that's why people don't walk as often. Of, of the progress of the 20 projects that we had, 13 of those have been completed. That's approximately 1.6 projects a year that we're getting finished. And out of that top 20 projects, these are the seven uh, that we still have yet to either uh, begin or to plan for. And just to show you some of the successes, this is Flat Creek in 2008. You can see Julie walking on the shoulder there. And this is uh, earlier this spring. And then of course, right out here on Montreat Road, out in front of the Universalist Unitarian Church, you can see the use beforehand with the desire lines, and then of course, the great job that everyone's done with the sidewalk there. So what's next coming up? Well, when we just passed the budget, we've started outlining sidewalk projects in our CIP. This is going to outline it and make uh, a clear reference point for the community to see where we are going forward. We're going to continue to, to fund projects through PAL bill funds, and these are the next projects in the CIP that, that were laid out. We've got Montreat Road Phase 4 and 5, NC9 beginning in a four-phase project, and the Flat Creek Extension. And hopefully after this, we'll move to adopt this tonight. And that is the update of the pedestrian plan. See, Matt, I told you I could do it. I know, that was fast. That was impressive. <laughs> Very good. Anyone got any questions? Ron, what's the first segment of, uh, of, the, of going out number nine of the first, of the four phases? What's the first one? Do you recall? The Matt, first you phase recall? would be... Well, so, well the, enti the, uh, and the, the entire phase goes from from it, where, where Blue Ridge Road and, uh, and number nine split off, and then it goes out to, uh, to Christmont. So I think we've broken it up into phases. We, honestly, because um, 
we know we're two years left on the Montreat Road project. That's why we broke that up into phases. So we don't, we don't, there are, there will be logical spots as we get through it. We have an engineer taking a look at, at the design work on it. I don't know what the first phase will do. I think we budgeted a hundred grand a year for a few yeah. years. So, so that, so phase is really the fa how much money? That's, that's right. <laughs> the, the phase will be a combination of where, where it makes a lot, where a logical stop is and where the money runs out. Those will be the way we do it. And, and, it, and honestly, when we bid it, when we start, we may make, we may make more headway that's right. than we think. I think right now, the, the, and as, as uh, Alderman Stone had pointed out, with, with the CIP, it gives us a, a tool to, to take a look at that in the future. It, you know, that, that every, every year you'll look at that and when we get closer, we may say, look, we can get more done. Um, in less time. My only comment would be, and I don't, you know, I don't, the mayor might be uh, running out that way more than any of the rest of us, but it, to me, driving out that way, it's going around the curve right after you pass Blue Ridge Road. It's, that's just dangerous. So if you could, yeah. that, that would be a priority as far as safety, that's concerned, because it's, and, it's and, not and safe to be there. The mayor's pointed out to, you know, the, we, we've gotten fortunate that, uh, that um, Cheshire is doing a bridge across mm -hmm. The creek, yeah. um, so and, and there's already you know there's already a trail running through part of it. I think so. As we get closer, and we actually look at actual cost. I think, like you said, there are there is an area that first area is really tight, and so um, there could be there could be extensive cross there, and then it might it might ease up a little bit. We might we might make more headway as we go forward. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I've got some some meetings scheduled with the uh, Church of Christ there, um, so that we can talk to them about. The state is giving us a little bit of hassle about just filling in. I mean, right. it'd be simple if the state would just let us fill in on the on the right side of that bank as you're going out of mm -hmm. out of town. Since they won't do that, the church and I've talked to several people already, but they haven't get permission yet to go down into their yard and then come back up towards the house. That's going to be a little steep in there, so we you know even mm -hmm. if we're if we were to do it the way that, that Ryan and I have talked about, we wouldn't be ADA compliant, but then again, we're not getting any funds right now, and if we could get the funds, we could do that, but at least for preliminary, we could mm -hmm. at least get something where people get get off the side of that Maybe road, not. because I have run that, and you're right, it is, it is, it is dangerous. Once you get beyond Cheshire, that's really probably going to be pretty easy. You would think, wouldn't you? You know, if we trim the inside of those Leland Cypress, and you can see how what effect that is if you go to Mon to Monta Vista. And if you're in the Monta Vista parking lot out back and look across the street in front of the Lamb's house, mm -hmm. they planted a lot of Leland Cypress and then they came along in there and trimmed them so that they still get the protection of the, of the, of, of the floor mm -hmm. there, but there's still room to walk. And I think it'd be the same way mm -hmm. from there all the way. Good. Appreciate that. Anyway, uh, I think we might as well just go ahead and let's just take a get a motion. I, that I would, yeah, we'd request a, a motion to a motion to adopt the update. Yeah. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay. Any more discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? And unanimous. Okay. Now we come to the interesting part of filling the. Vacancies on town boards and commissions. All right. The first one is the ABC board. Uh, we have a vacancy, three-year term expiring June 30th of 2019, and we have one applicant, Bill Christie. <coughs> Do I hear a nomination? Motion to approve okay. Bill Christie. Do I hear of any other nominations? All right, if not, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? So Bill Christie is unanimous, 5-0, for a three-year term on the uh, ABC board. Now we've got Green Waste Commission. We've got two vacancies, uh, three-year terms, and we've got three applicants. So as we discussed in the uh, agenda meeting, uh, we don't have to take these in any order, but whoever is, whoever gets the first, whichever two get unanimous votes or majority votes, then they will be uh, the ones who will fill those two vacancies. So do I hear a motion? 
I'd like to nominate Julie White. Julie White. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That's five of us. So Julie fills one. Now we've got a nomination. Either one of these will be new applicants applying for their first full term. I'd like to nominate Robin Josephs. Robin Josephs. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's also 5-0, so those two vacancies are filled. And I wish to thank uh, Angela for getting this together for us here. This, this, this is probably the easiest that it's ever flowed in the well, history that I've been <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we come to a really interesting one, the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, yes, here's what, here's what I would recommend. You didn't get any applications for this. This is a five-member um, commission. We are required, um, because we have a, a historic district and a conservation district, we're required by state law to have a historic preservation commission. We, but not a five-member, though. We can have a three-member commission. Um, we also, our ordinance, our local ordinance, um, requires people, at least a couple of the applicants, to live in the, in the town, in, in the district that they're, that they're serving in. The state law does not does not require us to do that. So what um, what I would recommend is that you, um, you 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 still have three you'll have three members even if you don't fill the people if you don't fill the vacancies tonight of who comes off the boards. So I would recommend that you make a motion to postpone filling the historic preservation commission until July 11th and let us bring you an or a change to our local ordinance that um, and then we can discuss in the interim whether you, whether you want to you, you, your choice is then for the ordinance and you'll give me feedback and we'll we'll write up the different options are to reduce the size or broaden um, the area within which you fill the uh, um, vacancies or uh, one or the other or both and uh, and we'll bring what well, so what we need to do probably in July is bring you an ordinance change first and then let and then you can and then you can fill these fill these positions or if you if you reduce the sides and you'll have a three-member board you have to have a three-member board I um, mean you have to have a um, commission but you don't have to have it limited to the district that is that is our um, and that may and that you may want to do that but that but that's not required by the state I don't think we need any kind of motion because the Commission is already set up we already have three on it we're just simply going to delay it that's right yeah and so, so if you don't want to do, do anything, anything you can just so, skip I, mean, it. I just don't think we need to okay to do anything because you haven't brought us anything that's right there's no there we yeah. have no new name for that one I, I guess my point is I will, we will bring in July some amendments to the to our ordinance and then you'll make appointments in July Okay, and the state statutes do do not require any type of residency within the historic district. Correct? No residency within the town, but not within the historic yeah. district. And I think that would be the, the the thing that I hope this board considers is just do it in the town. And if you're going to do that, then I would ask that between now and July, if you if you know people who may want to serve on this, I think it says I think the language says something like they have an interest or or expertise. something like, which or expertise. So you may think about people who who uh, who, who might fit. Fit that criteria, um, so that you, so that we could, uh, if that's what you want to do, then we we could appoint them in July. We could fill an application for. for but we have a three-member board. We have three members. You have three. Yes, you have a, but you have a five. We have a five-member board and two vacancies. So you got three yeah. members currently. But if we if we did if we decided just to go with the three-member board, then you could then just leave it the way it is. So you need to. You know, oh, when they oh okay I see. Well, that's true. So when when those when people ro rotate off in 2017, the issue could might need to be readdressed. I guess what we need is some feedback between now and July whether you want to reduce the size or expand the scope, either or or both, and then we'll bring that back to you. But you don't need you don't have to do anything tonight. We're, you're not going to appoint anybody because there's nobody that applied for it. Everybody in agreement on that? All right, good. Planning board we got three vacancies. Um, we got seven applicants. Uh, several are reapplying for a uh, second full term. Some, and then we've got four that are uh, applying for a first full term. So, we need a nomination for the to fill the first vacancy. I nominate Jesse Gardner. Jesse Gardner applying. For a first full term, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Five of us. So Jesse fills one of those three seats. 
a Montreal graduate. Um, need another nomination. I'd like to nominate Peter Vasquez. Peter Vasquez, reapplying for his second full term. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 5 0. He fills the second spot. And now we need a third spot filled. I'd like to nominate Lisa Milton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That was four to one, but that's a majority. So that's filled then. Now let's go to the Recreation Commission. Three vacancies, five applicants, two applying for reapplying for their second full term, and then three new ones. Do I hear a motion? Nominate Terry McElrath. Terry McElrath, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. I'd like to nominate Larry Brank. Larry Brank, reapplying for a second full term. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's 5-0. And the third one? I'd like to nominate Carolyn Johnson. Carolyn Johnson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We've got that filled. Urban forestry. We've got two vacancies. One three-year term ending June, and then one unexpired term. Um, let's do the full the full ones first. No, no, we just have two. We have one. Let's do the one. This would be for a full three-year term ending June 30th, 2019. And there's five applicants. Five or four? Or four? Just four. Okay. Do I hear a nomination? I nominate Ruth uh, Pizzard. Okay. Ruth, this is for the full one three year term. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's 5 0. And now we've got one to fill the unexpired term, which would be uh, for. Uh, two years. I'd like to nominate Maura McLaughlin. Maura McLaughlin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's also a five vote. Zoning Board of Adjustments. We have three vacancies and three alternates. The current three alternates may be appointed into the vacated seats to fill three-year terms expiring June the 30th. And the current alternates are? Um, John Newman and Julie. Yeah, because. Yeah, and this, and this year, in this year, you only, you, generally, we, generally alternates move up and then, you, and then you fill the alternate position. But because you've got a resignation from the alternates, and Angela will correct me, you'll get, you, if, you want to, if you want to consider the, you only have two alternates to consider. So you're actually going to appoint somebody at some point to the full full board too. I think that's correct. Okay, so we're going to go ahead right now and and get the the three vacancies filled, and they can be filled by the alternates, or they can be filled by other ones. It just depends on. Uh, and then we will fill the alternate seats. So, for the first vacancy, do I hear a nomination? I'd nominate John Dewitt. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, so John DeWitt fills one of those three vacancies. I need a nomination to fill the second vacancy. Either from the current alternates or from the applicants. Nominate Julian Ballard. Julian Ballard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we've got one seat left. So it's since Jerry Atkins resigned in June. Now we've got to go to the to the new applicants. I'd like to nominate Michael Raines. Michael Raines, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, five up. Okay. The three vacancies have been filled. Now we've got to fill three alternates. I'd like to nominate Rebecca Harris. 
Rebecca Harris, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hey, Rebecca's unanimous. We got two more. So to feel. Nominate Terry McCall. Terry McCall, all in favor? Uh, Terry McCall for an alternate. All those against? Aye. Okay, so let me get this. Let me just see a show of hands. So we had, yeah, how many people were for Terry McCall? That was one. One. Okay. It was one. All right. And then four against. Okay. All right. We've still got two vacancies left, so we'll go to the next one. Somebody nominate someone else. Robert. I nominate Robert Austin Jensen. Okay. Robert. Is nominated. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So that's 5 0. So he is alternate. He fills the second alternate seat. And now we have one alternate left. I'd like to nominate Mary Jo Adams. Mary Jo Adams. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's 5 0. Okay, we've got all those filled there. And that's that. All right. Good job, Angela. That made it easy on you. Okay, uh, we've got a public hearing for text amendment for steep slopes. If Josh could come up and explain this to us, please. General Assembly made some changes to the general statutes last year. These changes affected the ability for cities and towns and counties to regulate aesthetics for single family residence. residences. What this amendment does for our ordinance, currently we regulate aesthetics in our steep slope overlay district. This would uh, remove that from our section and get us in compliance with the general statutes. Maybe for the sake of, the, of the, our guests and the public, there's really just the change in our ordinance is really just pulling out some verbiage about what the a house is supposed to look like, isn't it? Correct. The, the only the only area we regulate aesthetics for single family structures is in our steep slope district, where we regulate it. Currently, we want people to use muted colors, natural materials, things of that nature, but we are no longer allowed to do that. When someone comes in um, and is and is applying on a, on a on a for a steep steep slope, would you continue to give them advice? You don't have to tell them because then if this passes, obviously that's that's going to remove correct. that. Correct. But huh? That's correct. Okay. Yes. But you would encourage them. That's to absolutely do this. correct. Okay. Yes. I think that would be good because I think that. And you know the um, at least in some sections in town, probably the settings we're going to require them to adhere to pretty much what we've got currently, and they can do that, but we just can't do that as a town. The home, you mean the homeowner association oh, is going to require that when they because there they have to go through an architectural committee to uh, to build to build homes. So that would be one where some of those requirements may still stay, but they would not be they would not be enforced from the town. We could only. Uh, advise and encourage uh, hope to. but we would encourage them to continue to build with natural colors and things of that nature blend in i think that would be good okay um they hear a motion to open the public hearing so <clears throat> all in favor aye. aye okay do we have anyone wishing to speak to this basically from what i understand mayor is is this is mandated by the state we don't have any choice. That's correct. It's no longer enforceable. Um, do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? Okay, so that's done. So we, so we must, we need to go ahead and adopt it, even though it's the state has said so. You know, we need to do that. All we right. do because we, should, we because and as the reason Josh brings so many public hearings and I am to you is because he's trying. We, we like to 
keep the land use code clean and up to date and as uh, as accurate as possible. And this would be this would reflect that. So we can, we're not going to we're not going to enforce it. So we would request that you that you would approve the change. You'll hear a motion to adopt the ordinance. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And I need to adopt a statement of consistency to amend Chapter Eight. You'll hear a motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, now we have a public hearing for text amendments to zoning and map amendments. Josh? <clears throat> Excuse me. Currently, before, that's the best way to explain this, before uh, things come to this board, we aren't required to notify the property owners or neighbors or whatnot for the planning board meetings. We are not required to do that by law. But we are currently doing that just to get more public input at those meetings um, before before they get to this to this board. So what this amendment does is kind of codifies it in our ordinance to to assure that one day if I'm not here or the staff's not here that the next staff will continue to do this and notify neighbors and property owners before they're actually going to the planning board for amendments to get more public input before it comes to the board of aldermen. Okay. Do I hear a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? You mean one wish to speak for the text amendment to the zoning and map amendments? Not seeing anyone wishing to speak, I make a, I hear a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, unanimous. Now we need a motion to adopt the ordinance 016 10. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's unanimous. Um, now to adopt a statement of consistency to amend Chapter 1. All, uh, the motion? So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous also. That's done. Communication. Sneed's not here, so Matt. Just, just a couple of. Uh, um, small things I would uh, um, remind the board and uh, um, that we will have our the RFP for our solid waste services will be uh, will, should be turned in tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon so we will uh, we'll see how um, how competitive that is we've had interest from a, from a handful of, uh, of vendors and uh, and we'd like you know we've, we've been pleased with the service but periodically it's good to go out and and uh, and, and see what other other competitors can do so that we can uh, keep our cost competitive and keep our cost down and our service level as high as possible. So we, so we will be receiving RFPs tomorrow and I'll report back to you in July on what we'll have a committee that kind of reviews what um, to make a recommendation from that. Uh, just just so you know. Um, May I ask a question? Oh, yes, sir. Um, I'm assuming we just have to wait until we see. Did we ask in that bid? Uh, did we put in there anything for about a ride or we know the fuel costs now are low? Mm -hmm. But is there anything in this bid that then that that we're requesting to say, you know, you that, that you could put that in and then we tie it to a certain index? Yes, but not so but not just but not but not just fuel. There's a there's a there's a, a variety of consumer price index factors that are built in to their cost, and then and then they have to break that out so that we can de determine whether those. Costs so there's are some triggers in there that could go ahead and raise what they charge us to yes. cover their increased costs. Yes, and also, but also the reverse is also true that we can also that if the costs were to drop off, then we then we have then, then we have leverage on our side to reduce costs. And that's so what runs, I was, that's both, what I was getting to. Both ways. Did we get did we get any reduction because of the reduction we, in fuel? We don't in our current contract. We, we, no, our current contract does not. Uh, does does not allow for reductions, and this this RFP does does um, have them show us to break out those costs so that it can be it can it can be on a sliding scale. My, you know, the fuel costs be the only ones that may that may go down. Other costs yeah. generally. Ten fees are not going to. That's right. So none of those other other costs go down. So so in the new contract, it'll be it'll go it'll go up or down depending on what those costs are. I remember from my years being in the furniture industry that we would get price increases from the manufacturers and most of the time that would be related to the increase in the cost of timber. 
when the timber prices came down, it, we never did get any cost reductions right. from the manufacturer. Right. So that's why I was just asking yes. here. That you had, you, glad that I'm you had mentioned that earlier, so we, we, had, we had put a provision in there to, to that, 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 that's a sliding scale that goes both, that it can, it goes up or down depending on, depending on certain factors. I mean, you know, there's, there's different criteria for how it's measured, but, but it can go up or down for, for us and for them. Very good. Uh, the other, the other thing I would point out, um, the, the, because you may hear about this as the, as the, the planning board and, and Josh and his staff, or, a or at least a committee from the planning board are working on a future land use plan. Uh, that is a, you want me to, Future land use map. I'm sorry, that's right. Future land use map. See, I thought he was going to tell me not to mention this, but the future a future land use map. This is a, a when, when you approve the comprehensive plan, um, the update a couple of years ago, uh, a missing component of that was a future land use map. This this is a discussion that will develop that people groups will be involved with with. It's not. It's. I guess my, the point I want to make is this is not an effort to rezone areas. It's not a discussion about rezoning. It's about um, uh, the land use needs of the community and how and how um, how we see uh, uh, growth in Black Mountain. And so I, I, as as we as we move through the process, you'll hear people say, "Well, they're going to rezone this or rezone that." All those obviously, if there was a rezoning, we just as we had the process tonight that to call for public hearing. All that comes through you. This. This uh, land use map will ultimately come to you too, but this is more of a vision and a future plan for how different areas of the town could or maybe should develop. You will all you will all have input into that. This is this is more of a a, uh, a, a map that gives you a, a a guideline for how you want to see the town develop. Not a, nothing nothing that's in, in this would rezone anything. That is a process that we go through. And when, this when is springing. This uh, the land use map is springing forth from the strategic plan. A comprehensive update. plan. Update. Yeah, yes. a comprehensive plan. And, what, and the time the timeline for that, Josh, we're we're, we're still months, a few months away. Yeah, probably at least probably three. Okay, so so we're looking at the fall when uh, when you when you may see it. But I just wanted to give you. I just wanted to to let you know that that's that that's coming. And and while I did not write the time down for this, on July thirteenth. DOT will have a meeting at the Lakeview Center. You remember we, we did this maybe last year. Yeah, they did one where they where they where they set up maps and show the projects that are going on in the area. And it, I think that's is that similar to what it should be the same. The same the same idea. There'll be DOT representatives there. They'll have maps not not of of all of all the projects in the area. This is one in the, you know trying to reach out to different parts of the county and uh, um, and so we'll have it at the Lakeview Center. I think it's July thirteenth. I, I will send that out. Pretty sure it's five to seven. That's what I think too. But I didn't. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I wrote that on something it's else. A, that but was, I, but I'll make sure a that nice I send that out to and everybody. They, and they have they have a lot of resources mm -hmm. there. So and we'll put that on we'll put that on our web page and our Facebook yeah. page yeah. so that people can see the time because I, I would like as much you know obviously as much public input as we could get on projects that impact the area. And that's all that I have. Well, do we have any other comments? Uh, I would like members? to like to make a comment and and just kudos to the um, board of directors and, and all the people who participated in the Art in Bloom down at the Art Center. It's a, it's a great event and if you haven't had a chance to go, it's worth, it's worth attending. Uh, it's really their, I guess, their signature fundraising event for the year. But a lot of folks in particular for not only to see the, um, you know, the displays and the artwork, uh, at the museum at the art center but the garden tour that follows it you know we have friends that come in out of town every year to participate and go on the garden tour and to go to the art center as well so it's a and i think this was their 10th art in bloom but it was a, it was good i did make it to art in bloom i didn't make it the agenda meeting but i did make it to <laughs> art in bloom so uh it was it's a good job and those folks work hard like a lot of folks in town a lot of volunteer work and another lot of uh, people that have put in a lot of time and effort, and that is for the Black Mountain Museum, and that open house will be this Friday from 5, is it 5 to 7 or 5.30? 5.30 to 7.30. So if you get time, go by. Anybody else? Yeah, Mayor, I'd like just to reiterate just something that we do it every year, but when we are making our uh, commission appointments, normally, when we have someone who's served two years, I mean two terms, and w then we feel like 
that two terms is, is enough, you know, regardless of the, the fantastic job that they've done, which, which we have a lot of folks that have, but we usually then let somebody that, that, that come off that board and to where we keep it rotating and, and give every citizen, especially if you've got folks, a lot of folks applying, every citizen an opportunity. That is not to say that once you've been off for a year, just like Jesse Gardner uh, has been, doesn't mean that the town can't serve and, and can continue doing all. But we normally have a, a uh, our standard is two and done. And then, and then that that's allows other folks to, to come and, and uh, participate in, in the uh, civic process. Not hearing or seeing anybody wishing to speak anymore. Meeting adjourned. <coughs>